Hey y'all, it's Wendy. This is Wendy's Parade of Perfume. Here I just do perfume reviews on whatever I feel like talking about, whatever's on my shelf, whatever I want to rant about, whatever I want to discuss. So um, it's been a hot minute because I had so many ideas and so much organization and then I got really, really, really sick. It was not COVID. It was, I was cleaning out a fence line in my yard and I got covered in poison ivy. Nothing was bloomed yet, so I knew there were some in there, but I was so sick. It went into my joints. I had to go on steroids for weeks. I had to go on antibiotics for weeks. I got all screwed up from those two, but I don't even know what state I would be in if I was not taking medication because, I mean, I had to call out from work. I couldn't even stand up. It was so horrible. Um, but that aside, that's my absence, um, and I've just had a lot of things going on. But it's spring. Like everybody else, I want to talk about my spring perfumes. And I was looking through everything and I was like, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. And I'm seeing a theme. They're all from Chanel. Um, so what I'm going to, this whole review and list is going, is going to be about what I think are some wonderful Chanel's for spring. And per usual, I have, I have vintage, I have basic, I have um, classic, I have a version of Chanel number no. five, you know, we got it all. I think what I'm going to start out with are the irises because who doesn't like some cooling serious iris that is also green for spring. So the first one is a little bit of an oddball and I don't really hear anybody talking about it. And that is Chanel number 18. Ooh, you, you focused and then you didn't. Okay. Um, this is part of their less exclusives line. This one's weird. It's an ambrette and iris and musk scent. Um, it smells a little sour and it smells even a little tiny bit metallic and it has like a little bit of iris rose and then has a lot of ambrette in the dry down. It's a very odd fragrance, but it's very, it's very aloof and cooling and it's very unique, it's different. So this is really good for spring because I just think of wearing like a dress with it because, um, but like a fancy dress, you know, like a nice fancy dress where, you know, you just give people shade around you because you look nice in your fancy dress. So um, anyway, that is Chanel number 19, to, or excuse me, Michelle number 18 to start with, followed by the sister to Prada Infusion Duris, Chanel number 19. Did they do that on purpose? Because that has iris in it too. I wonder if that's why they named it Chanel number 18. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. So this is Chanel number 19 Poudre, and this has a lot of green galbanum and iris, and it is kind of in between um, Chanel number 19 and Prada Infusion Duris. So if Chanel number 19 is a little bit too much for you, but you like the idea of it, uh, this is a really lovely iris and done in Chanel fashion. Although Prada Infusion Duris is like one of my favorite perfumes of all time, I'm not going to lie. I feel like this is slightly better executed. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I feel like that, but, um, I think this is discontinued. I don't know. Um, I think this is discontinued, but anyway, green, cooling, iris, Chanel number 19, serious, beautiful, aloof, Chanel number 19, Poudre. The next one is the inspiration for Chanel number 19, Poudre, going back to the seventies. And that is good old Chanel number 19. Um, you want to have some serious iris. This is Serious Iris, Oak Moss, Vetiver, Woody, Masculine Feminine, 1970. It was the times. That's the way things were then. Um, but this is another green. It's another green one. And I really like this one. And I also have it in the Eau de Toilette. But I've been wearing the Eau de, I've been wearing the Eau de Parfum lately. Uh, the Eau de Toilette is a little more floral. I think I feel like the Eau de Parfum is a little more woody and the Eau de Toilette is a little more floral. I've just been preparing this though because something about it makes me think of just silver, silver and dirt, silvery dirt. That's what I think of. Not all the time though. You know how you wear perfume for many years and it changes like what you think of it or some, some days or some years, like you smell different aspects of it a little bit more, or I've had this bottle for a long time. It could even be changing in the bottle. I don't know. But anyway, Chanel, we have the Chanel number 19s. Let's just stick with the seventies. Um, this is a perfume that um, nobody really talks about anymore. Uh, Super 70s. This is Chanel Cristal. Oh gosh, that's not going to work. I'm so sorry. Uh, there we go. Chanel Cristal. This is the Eau de Toilette. There is an Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette is from the 70s and true to form. 
Um, it's really mossy, really um, cold, really um, dirty, but it also has like an icy feeling to it. Uh, so, so it's one of those. It's this is early spring. Like if you live in the north, it can still snow. It can still get icy. It's going to be very, very, very cold. And this is like cold spring. You know, the crocuses are coming up through the snow. That's how early spring this is. The Eau de Parfum, I should do a review on these two because I really like these two. The Eau de Parfum, I have a big decant of it. That has like this big melon note in it. And I usually don't like a melon, but it's so summery that it works. So that is more like later spring when everything's blooming and, you know, you can eat cantaloupe. Um, so there we go. For the 70s, I think that's all I have for Chanel in the 70s. We have Cristal. Let's just have, what do I do? Do I do the basics or do I do the florals? Let's do the florals first. Um, so I have two florals. They're both in the less exclusive slime, but um, I have Chanel Gardenia. This, I like this and I enjoy it, but do not pay full price for this. I got this, I bought this from someone for like 90 bucks a while back. Um, I guess they didn't like it either. And it was before they had the huge price hikes. I use this as like a body spray almost. So Gardenia has no um, natural extraction. So whenever they do Gardenia, it, it is like a melange of other aroma chemicals or other extracts of white flowers like jasmine and orange blossom and that sort of thing. So it's kind of like a fantasy flower since it's nothing that they can get from the real deal. So this is really sweet for Chanel. It's it to me it smells like a gardenia, but it's like the Candyland version of gardenia, um, along with like a little bit of soil and woods on the very bottom. But it's fun. I like it. I would not pay full price for this, but it's a sweet fruity floral. <laughs> you never thought Chanel would have a sweet fruity floral, but but they do. Um, so that is gardenia. Like I said, I almost use this as like a body spray. This only lasts for me about four to six hours. It's not that strong, but. It's fun and it is pretty. It's just kind of like, you know, fun and lighthearted and pretty and it's a nice floral. Uh, the second one, which is a little more serious, is beige. I don't know how they managed to do this because this is also really sweet. Uh, this is Hawthorne, Freesia, and Frangipani, like loaded with honey. So it's like a honeyed white floral. But somehow it's still pretty, I think it's still pretty sophisticated. Um, but it's... Yeah, so much honey, honey, beeswax, just dripping over the white flowers, maybe because it just smells so, so real. That's why it doesn't come off as so candied. But um, this is really floral, really sweet, very fun, very happy, very uplifting. It's like mood lifting. Um, so this is a really lovely, unserious floral because, you know, Chanel, they have all their irises and they have all those like pearls and cashmere florals that they usually do. So these two, to me, the gardenia and the beige, gardenia being like a candied gardenia and the beige being like their summery frangipani honeyed floral. Um, this is really pretty. This is really good in the winter too. If you're like just down on the dumps and you haven't seen the, the sun in two weeks, this is a really nice one to kind of lift your mood. So those are kind of like my happy florals. All right, let me just do some basics up in here. Whoops, the camera. Oh my God. I'm not, I don't even know how to edit. Y'all get to see that. I don't care what anybody says. I like Gabrielle. I like it. So, um, orange, this is a million white flowers. If you don't like white florals, I get it. You don't have to like this. No one has to like anything. I don't mean it like that, but, um, white florals, sandalwood, pettigrain, little fringes of black currant, very tart, fruity, black currant, um, orange blossom and grapefruit on the top. Uh, I like it. I like it. It's a beautiful white floral. It's very well done. Three or four sprays will do you. If you want to know more, look on, this is loved and hated at the same time. And there's a million reviews of it on YouTube, but this is their uh, new catering to the masses Chanel white floral. I love it though. Maybe to a little, I think this falls into one of their serious florals admittedly. So if you're not into a serious floral, maybe um, Gabrielle is not for you, but I like Gabrielle for summer. And I love this. I do not care how basic everybody thinks this is, but this is one of the pink uh, Chanel Chants. This is Autand. And yes, it smells like a white musk and really lemony laundry detergent. I don't care. This just works on a, 
on a warm day after a shower. It's uplifting. It lasts forever. It's clean. It's easy. It has a nice tinge of rose in the middle. It's, it's just satisfying. It smells good. It's easy to wear. It's easy to put together. You, you, you will smell put together when you wear it. Um, it's in between being serious and in between being just happy and uplifting. Um, I actually wear this quite a bit. It lasts a long time and I like it. So good for spring. And because I need a Chanel number no. five for every season, my favorite one that's a little bit lighter is the old Eau Premier. This is a huge haze of just soft ylang ylang and just soft florals. And it's very admittedly powdery, but I like it. This is the one I like. I like this better than the one they put out, the Chanel Number no. 5 Low. I do like that one. But I actually think this is a little bit younger and more lighthearted than that one because that one has a lot of serious iris. But Chanel Number no. 5, my pick for as a, as a number 5 for the spring. It's too bad they don't make these anymore. I like these big 5-ounce tumblers. I'll never run out, hopefully. Okay. So let's have the green of the greens. Now, I guess you can say some of the other ones are green, like uh, number 19 is green, um, Crystal's kind of green, but I think they're more like iris and oak moss and things like that. So one, I'll just start with this one. This is Paris Edinburgh. I admit I have only tested this. This is brand new to me. I only got it in January, but it even has a cool color. Oh, my little camera just focus. Just do it. There we go. Paris Edinburgh. So this is supposed to be green and this isn't has notes of juniper. It's very, very woody. It smells a little bit like absinthe. It smells like, you know, the cold countryside. <laughs> um, this is going to be very masculine for some people. It's not floral and it's not sweet at all. I'm really glad that they put something like this out. This is right up my alley. Like I said, though, I can't do a full dissertation on it because I've only tested it a few times and I haven't really worn it yet, but I am going to be wearing this in the spring. Um, these are meant, these are meant to be light. So lasting power isn't great. You've got to put a lot on, but at least they don't charge an arm and a leg for Chanel. I mean, they're not cheap, but anyway, Edinburgh for greens. The second one, which is a little bit of a heavier green, is Bel Respiro. And this is like grassy green. This is like, like mowed lawns at the country club. Um, it also has a little bit of leather in it. Not very much. Don't be scared off by the leather. But this is like for people that like the idea of a, le a leathery green 70s perfume, but updated for modern tastes. So it's not that scary. It's not that bad. Um, but this is, I don't know. This is kind of like a green metal perfume. Sound of music and all that. So Bel Respiro. Okay, the last one, because I need to have a woody perfume that I can wear in the hot weather. Um, I think Bois de Eel is perfectly fine for summer months. This is not heavy at all. This is a lot of yang yang and rose and iris and obviously it's supposed to be woody it's sandalwood but the sandalwood is good it's nice it smells like sandalwood it also smells it's like cut with other woods so it's like sandalwood threaded through with other woods with a lot of ylang ylang and it's not like you know i'm gonna hit you over the head with sandalwood it is just the sandalwood is woven in with the lighter the lighter florals and the ylang ylang so this does not wear heavy at all it actually has this kind of floaty, floaty character. I don't know how else to describe it, but kind of floats off your skin. It's not that heavy. I would commit a crime to find this in vintage. I've never been able to. I've only, I only have, this is the Eau de Parfum, by the way. The Eau de Toilette that they put out in 2007, I have a decant of that. That has like a um, warmer, almost foodie notes. Like there's like gingerbread notes and it's a little bit, spicier this this is not spicy at all so i would say that the eau de parfum the last one that they put out is a lot different than even the other reformulated version but going back before that i don't know what this smells like when they had it out back in the day even in the 90s i don't know what it smells like because people must have just used those bottles that's how good it is even in the norm even in the in the form that they have now so this would be a nice 
albeit still lighter, but woody sandalwood perfume for summer that I think, spring and summer that I think would wear really well. So those are my picks for Chanel. Those are my Chanel's that I like to wear in the spring. There's a lot. I could probably just wear a Chanel all spring and that's all I would have to do. If you stuck with me this far, I'm sorry I flipped my phone over. I'm not much of an editor. I'm not trying to influence anybody. I just like talking about perfume. So um, let me know what you think about um, any of these. Even if you're like, Gabrielle's basic. I hate her. I hate those dirty 70s perfumes. Like whatever. That's cool. Like let me know. Let me know what you like to wear. And um, let me know what you're going to be wearing in the spring. If you stuck me with for this long, thank you so much. And... I hopefully will not have any more mishaps. I mean, what am I going to do? Get COVID next? Like, I just, I cannot believe I got so sick with that damn poison ivy. That was horrible. Ugh. Anyway, I have to go back to work tomorrow. And I was like, it's now or never. I'm just going to do this review. Because I had all of these Chanel laid out to talk about. And I know I went through them very fast. But um, anyway, thank you so much. And uh, let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time. Bye.